On this track, you will hear commentary by director-playwright Russ Lees and Myron Mizell. Director Playwright Russ Lees. This is perhaps the most successful sequence of Othello in terms of Wells melding together image, pacing of the events, Shakespeare's language, and the background music as well. There's always a problem when bringing Shakespeare to the screen of what to do with the soliloquies, especially those soliloquies which are really the thoughts of the speaker. Laurence Olivier loved to just do a voiceover. We see a close-up of the speaker, and we hear his thoughts. For me, this has never seemed quite adequate. On stage, it feels quite normal to watch someone voicing their thoughts. On screen, it feels unusual. So the solution normally is to just do it as a voiceover, which is what Wells does here. However, he refines it. He's careful to either obscure Othello's face or not even have Othello in the frame. He's found a kind of middle ground between a soliloquy and a voiceover. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can The character neither speaks directly to us, nor do we enter directly into his thoughts. It seems to me that it works much better as a method of integrating the soliloquy into the film. There's something nice about having Desdemona pretend to be asleep. It's perhaps the one time when she really is deceiving Othello. The put out the light and then put out the light speech is perhaps the most famous soliloquy in the play. It's typical Shakespearean metaphor, the metaphor of the candle, the first light he puts out, and then Desdemona's life, the second light he puts out. And that goes well with the interpretation of the play of Desdemona as the goodness and higher self of Othello. Well, do it and be brief. Here in the play, he kisses her several times while she sleeps, Wells has cut the kisses and the lines that go with them. Instead, without the lines, he brings one kiss in later, after the murder. In the play, he kisses her and then has the line, Be thus when thou art dead, and I will kill thee and love thee after. If you say so, I hope you will not kill me. Peace and be still. The important part to note about Wells' performance here is his very successful portrayal of the inner torment of Othello. It's difficult to work Othello up to the emotional point of murdering Desdemona. A trap in the part is that the actor is so worried about achieving that pitch that he forgets to play the turmoil of struggling with the actual killing. Yes, he's come to this decision, but it's not altogether made before the scene starts. The way he plays it harkens back to his farewell the tranquil mind speech from some scenes earlier. Even in his murderous intent, he's struggling to maintain a tranquil mind. He hath confessed. What, my lord? That he accused thee. One of the most effective moments in the entire play is just after she pleads about Cassio. I never gave it him. Send for him hither. Let him confess a truth. Othello replies, he hath confessed. Just there, she must realize that the earth has completely fallen away. She is lost. Earlier, he wanted to poison her, but Iago spurred him on with, strangle her in her bed, even the bed she hath contaminated. Here, Othello goes him one better. He actually strangles her with the bed sheets. Then finally, the kiss during the murder. Director Playwright Russ Lees. Here we have a segment from the 1922 silent film of Othello, directed by Dmitry Buchevetsky, with the great Emil Jannings as Othello and Leah de Putti as Desdemona. The very idea of doing Shakespeare silently is really quite amazing because he is so language based. The translation from poetry to image has to be almost complete, except you've got dialogue cards every now and then to help you out. The 
death scene starts off with this long, lovely shot, taking the time to set up the high passions to come. Here they've cut out the put out the light speech because it's a metaphor, the metaphor of the candlelight and Desdemona's life. And that's fairly difficult to communicate visually. And reading Shakespeare's poetry just isn't the same as hearing it. One thing they are able to do here is compress a great many effects. Her reaction to the have you prayed line compresses several lines of dialogue. You can see from her reaction shot that she understands the full import of that line immediately. All the lines about talk you of killing are gone but the same emotions are registered. The dialogue cards occasionally give us Shakespeare's lines, but more often they're altered Shakespeare, which is unfortunate. Here, my sins are, the loves I bear to you is changed to, my love for you, that is my only sin. The ambiguity in the line that Othello takes in the wrong sense, as if the loves she's talking about are lovers, that ambiguity is lost. Even the slightest change to Shakespeare loses something. The murder itself is amazingly powerful and abrupt. This Othello seems to have genuinely lost his mind. Myron Mizell. Well said. My film did not do justice to the play, but I made no attempt to imitate Shakespeare. In Othello, I felt I had to choose between filming the play or continuing my own line of experimentation and adapting Shakespeare quite freely to the cinema form. Without presuming to compare myself to Verdi, I think he gives me my best justification. The opera Othello is certainly not Othello the play. It certainly could not have been written without Shakespeare, but it is first and foremost an, an opera. Othello the movie, I hope, is first and foremost a motion picture. Director Playwright Russ Lees. Now we have a clip from a Russian version of Othello, filmed in 1956, directed by Sergei Yutkovich, with Sergei Bondarchuk as Othello, and Irina Skovetsova as Desdemona. Unfortunately, it's dubbed, and that's done a disservice to the film, because the dubbing feels almost as though they laid a British radio version of the play on top of this film. Put out the light. Right away, we see our Othello done in the more traditional blackface, which is probably how it was done in Shakespeare's time. Very, very dark makeup on Othello. I can again thy former light restore, should I repent me. But once the first directorial choice that's been made is to invert the sense of the put out the light speech. To put out the light and then put out the light is normally delivered as he actually puts out the candle, and then he's planning to put out her light. Yutkovich inverts that. He keeps the light lit here, and then it will be put out after her death. Ah, Bob. 
laws persuade justice to break her sword. One more. The speech about the kisses has been kept in for this scene. It's quite touching through here, both touching and sensual. One more and that's the last. We notice that the actors made a clear choice here. Othello can love her only when she's asleep. As soon as she awakens, he becomes the man bent on vengeance. There's something especially appealing about this Desdemona. She retains all the angelic aspects that are traditionally associated with Desdemona, but there's something about her reactions and the performance here, both of the actress and even the dub, that seem quite genuine, especially when she becomes threatened. Now, historically, this play, even in the 1600s, there are passages and diaries about the fact that when attending the play, there were members of the audience that would call out to save Desdemona. And that kind of reaction has come from audiences throughout the ages. I shall walk and wait. I would not kill thy unprepared spirit. I would not kill thy soul. Talk you of killing? I. I would not yet to die. This instinct to Present. stop this terrible mistake that's about to happen seems to be an aspect of the scene that we this director wants to play to. He ends up with this extraordinarily unexpected shot. It's comic, really, in its attempt to get us to feel Desdemona's plight. He ends up almost in the horror film genre which, of course, the play has those aspects. In fact, in the story that Shakespeare used as a source, Othello and Iago actually beat Desdemona to death with a stocking filled with sand. So the horror show titillation is latent there in the story. The music to this film was scored by Cacheturian. Myron Mizell. Curiously uh, enough, Wells's Othello having won the Palme d'Or at the 1952 Cannes Film Festival. Uh, this was a feat that was duplicated a mere three years later when Yukovich's Othello from the Soviet Union also won the Palme d'Or. That's the only time the same, the same show in two different film versions has both won that prize. Finally, the light goes out, blown out by the wind. So in this case, it's not Othello that puts out the light, it's the wind. And in a way, that shot equates his anger with the force of nature. <laughs> Director playwright Russ Lees. This death scene is taken from Franco Zeffirelli's 1986 film of Verdi's opera, Otello with Placido Domingo as Otello and Katia Ricciarelli as Desdemona. Throughout this film, and certainly in this scene, we can see the influence of Wells' film on Zeffirelli, the beginning shadow cast by Othello. The set itself, done here at La Scala, is done with the netting motif, the cage motif that Wells uses throughout his film. We even see similar camera angles, even Othello peering through bars almost spying on Desdemona. There have been many adaptations of Shakespeare to opera. Rossini did a version of Otello, not as successful as this one. Verdi did a Macbeth, and there's a Midsummer Night's Dream. Shakespeare lends himself very much to opera. After all, the plays are in verse already. They have a very strong rhythmical component. And the stories tend to be about larger-than-life characters, dealing with big emotions that need poetry or music to support the stories. They translate very well directly into opera. Verdi's opera here, written in 1889, is perhaps the most successful of all, the genius of Verdi matching the genius of William Shakespeare. Even though this film is indebted to Wells' treatment, there's a clear difference in the film, a difference in the feel. Where there was an aesthetic distancing element to Wells' film, Zeffirelli puts lots of energy into making his film very lush, 
Zeffirelli, of course, worked on other Shakespeare plays, his Romeo and Juliet and Hamlet, and he gives that same feeling of lushness to those films. The warm colors here. This invites us into his world. So even though this film is equally as stylized as Wells, after all, the characters here sing, so if anything, there are elements that are more stylized, it's the sort of film that brings us into the character's emotion. We invest in the characters. He's completely cut out the put out the light speech, along with all the kisses, and moves directly into the confrontation between Desdemona and Othello. The rhythms of the lines in the singing matches the rhythm of Shakespeare's broken lines, the broken pentameter lines. Here, the libretto is exactly matching the rhythms of the original play, even though they aren't saying exactly the same things. Of all the Desdemonas we've seen, this is the only one who actually runs away, which feels perfectly appropriate. We end, astonishingly, with the most brutal murder of those we've seen. The power of the music, however, makes it feel artistically correct. <laughs> 